Good morning guys! Hello! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm filming a Q&A, a a very casual chatty Q&A. I actually asked on YouTube for questions this time. I usually go to Instagram but I thought you guys are the ones watching this video so I asked on the community tab on YouTube. You guys asked me loads of questions, thank you so much, and I picked 10 of what I thought were the most kind of interesting fun ones. Actually, I've just realized I don't have a cup of tea and I need a cup of tea. So let's go down to the kitchen. You can come with me. Let's make a cup of tea. We moved so much stuff in our kitchen around. My sister via FaceTime like made me rearrange my kitchen. She's so good with this kind of thing. So we put things that we use like every day in like easier places. And actually it's made such a difference. By the way, Yorkshire tea, skimmed milk, no sugar. Okay, the first question comes from Raspberry Salad who asked, is there anything you're planning to change around the house this year? And Adrienne also asked, any plans for the garden this year? I love the Renault stuff so much. We would love to do the garden, but there always seems to be something else that comes first. I guess we're inside the house more than we're out. So we're kind of prioritizing doing the inside of the house. When we moved in, we did the renovation. The year after that, we had a newborn and it wasn't the time to be doing a garden. And then this year we have other things that we need to do first. So the garden's kind of taking a back seat at the moment, which is a shame, but it's totally like usable. That's why we did the decking when we did the renovation because we can sit out there, Greg can play out there. So it's totally usable. It's really lovely out there. It just hasn't got like nice beds or flowers or anything yet. So it's definitely something we're planning maybe for next year. I'd love to do some like a little barbecue area at the back and a pergola, is that what it's called? And that will give us a bit of privacy as well because there's like a house that's overlooking us. And then I'd like to do some raised beds beds on the side. It is a south facing garden but the side where I wanted like the beds and stuff and I wanted to do some little like veg patches doesn't get as much sun because there's some big trees so I don't know if we'll be able to do that. All I know is I want some kind of raised beds so that when Gray's playing football in the garden the ball will like bounce off the sides because I used to hate it when the football went in the bushes all the time and we'll probably get like a massive trampoline for her as well and we'll have to work that in. It's not a massive garden at all so like I said for now it's fine we're just lucky to have a garden. Gabby asked, are you worried that lockdown could be affecting Gray's development and exposure to new things? And are you doing anything specific to counteract it? We always said that, that we would send Gray to nursery when she was two. And the main reason for that is because the nursery that my sister sent their kids to only takes kids from when they're two. And I really wanted her to go to that nursery because we know it and it's lovely. But that was when I knew that we'd be doing play dates and seeing other kids. So I wasn't worried about her not going to nursery until she was two. But then all of this happened and suddenly she doesn't see other kids. And so I have been quite worried about that. She's so lucky that she's got cousins that we've been able to like go for walks with and stuff. But I would have liked her to spend more time with other kids her age. We're not worried because of her specific personality. I think she's She's like doing so well. She seems like quite a clever little girl and we try to do as much stuff as we can at home, teaching her colours and shapes and doing painting and cooking with her. We're pretty hands-on and she's so lucky that she gets to spend time with both of us, which I think makes things so much easier in terms of like, you know, I'm working today, so tomorrow I can be like excited to spend the day with her and I can think of things to do, whereas if you're doing it every single day, it can be hard to like get that motivation. I really, really wish that we'd been able to do more baby classes and stuff this year. I, I don't think it's gonna affect her development though. I think she's young enough that it won't affect her. I think people who have older kids who are missing out on school have it a lot harder. I think we're actually really lucky with the age that she is. Megan asks, could you talk about the Peloton? Why did you decide to get it? Where is it in the house? Does it take up that much space? And is it worth it? Always considered it, thanks. Megan, I literally uploaded a video yesterday, it won't be yesterday when this goes up, to my Instagram on my IGTV about Peloton and my first impressions. It's not a review, because as I said in the video, I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm like a full on beginner. So definitely head over to Instagram to watch that video if you're interested in like all of my thoughts and I, I go into more detail there. Yeah, we got a Peloton in November, having never done a spin class in my life. But I thought 
I'd like to give it a try. At the time they did a month's free trial and I really like it. I love that it's music based. I find that really motivating. I love music. I love doing things like in rhythm. It's so quiet that I can use it while Grey is napping and while she's sleeping in the evening, even though we literally have it in the room next door. So that is so important for us. It just makes working out like a lot easier because I used to have to do like an hour round trip to go to a local Pilates class, whereas now I can get on the bike, off the bike, and within half an hour, I'm like showered in in my pajamas and ready to make dinner. So it's really convenient. I'm still finding it quite hard. I'm very much still on like beginner classes and like struggling to move on from those, but I am enjoying it a lot more than I thought. Definitely head over to Instagram to see my like proper, more in-depth thoughts on it. Um, if you're interested on my first impressions on the Peloton, but we're really enjoying it. Don't be fooled though, I'm not like working out every day on the Peloton, I still absolutely dread working out and if you follow me on there you'll see that I often have long periods of time where I don't go on it. <laughs> but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Someone commented on my Instagram saying, how can it be worth the money when you've only done 22 classes since November? And I replied saying, well that's 22 more classes than I've done in the last like two years. So basically that's my answer, like it's better than nothing. I need to do exercise for my health and having something literally in my house gives me pretty much no excuses. Actually, let's go upstairs and I'll show you where we keep it. So this is where we keep it, in my office. Yeah, it's quite squishy, but the bike itself actually isn't too big. So it's literally just here against the wall. We got a smaller mat from Amazon because the one that comes from Peloton is massive. And this is where it lives. Harriet asked, what other names did you consider before you picked Grey? The other name we had for her was Teddy, which I absolutely love for a girl. But I'm gutted because I feel like I can't use Teddy now because it doesn't go with Grey. I can't have Grey Teddy. It literally sounds like Grey Teddy. I don't know, they don't go well together. Actually, not many names go well with Grey because it's like a descriptive word. So if you, any sort of like object or like animal or anything like that doesn't really go with it. So yeah, that was our other name and I still love it. Yeah, and we didn't really have any others. I don't like kind of classic names that everybody has, but then I don't like kind of really, really quirky names. I don't know, if you guys can think of any names that go well with grey, let me know. I'll add it to my list. Oh, another name that we love for a girl is Ray, but it rhymes with grey. <laughs> Ray was gonna be her middle name when she wasn't called Grey, but obviously it can't be Grey Ray. Also, um, Caroline's middle name is Ray, Angelica, Ruth's daughter's middle name is Ray. There's quite a lot of Rays within the people that I know, but I do love that name. Pauline asks, do you feel like you found yourself in terms of your YouTube content, etc., now that you've been a mum for a while and since it was such a struggle for you mentally while you were pregnant, would you tell fellow YouTubers not to worry if they are in that situation? I definitely feel like this year I'm like a totally different person and it took a lot longer than I expected. I think throughout my pregnancy I struggled so much with like exhaustion and just mentally coming up with anything creative. I got into a real pattern of just doing vlogs every week because that was the easiest thing for me to do at the time. But I do feel like by doing that, I've kind of lost the ability now to do a sit down video and all people want from me is vlogs, which now I find the hardest thing to do because on my days where I'm not working, I can't vlog because I'm looking after Grey. And then on the days where I'm working, I need to work. I need to like sit down and do work. So I can't really be vlogging. And then the weekends is like family time. So I find it really hard actually to fit vlogs in now. And I feel like I almost made myself a bit of a vlog channel while I was was pregnant so that's been a bit of a struggle to me to work out like how to solve that and then after being pregnant I just felt physically so not myself and insecure I didn't know what my style was so I felt like I couldn't do any fashion content I just didn't really know what my thing was and I feel like this year I've really learned some like tricks and stuff to make creating content easier for me I've just sold all of my old camera gear so my big SLR camera my big fancy lenses because if anything that I think that was holding me back it was intimidating it was complicated and it doesn't need to be for the sort of content that I know you guys like for me it's all about how engaging it is and it's all about what the actual content is I'm not a filmmaker making films for cinemas I don't need that sort of like fancy extreme equipment there are small cameras and iPhones that do just as good as job and when I realized that it's made all the difference and I hope you guys are enjoying like the reels and like the fun content I'm making on Instagram I'm pretty sure that's all down to me just kind of making the equipment side of things easier I don't have anyone like 
like setting up the camera for me, setting up the lighting for me, doing the editing for me. So if I can just make it like a quicker, easier process, I can focus more on what the actual content is. And that's been a big like turning point for me. I'm hoping next time it'll be easier for me because I've already been through that big change, that first big change. I can't imagine my like body will change that drastically second time around because it already has. And I think I know a bit more of what to expect. I think I'll be less shocked with the newborn stage. I don't know, anyone who's got two kids, let me know, am I being completely naive there? In terms of like, do I feel like I've found myself? I still feel like I don't have a thing. I don't know if you necessarily have to have a thing online. And what I mean by that, maybe I mean like a niche. I don't know, you know how you think of like, Jamie Genevieve, she does beauty. Megan Ellaby, she does fashion. She's all about color. Do you know what I mean? Like some, a lot of people have a thing and I don't know what my thing is. And I think my thing is, is that I don't have a thing. <laughs> I said things so many times, but I do lifestyle I'm very like real and honest and I think that's what you guys would say if I asked you but being lifestyle and doing a bit of everything makes quite a few things quite tricky so I wish I had a thing and I'm always looking for that thing and I don't know what it is if you guys think I have a thing please let me know. Lucy, do you have any renovation regrets or things that looking back you would have done a bit differently? Definitely, and I think that's normal. Like, real life isn't perfect. This is the first time we've ever renovated a property. Hopefully there'll be many more as we get older. Like, we're still young and we were so inexperienced when we did this. I think we did really well considering we've never done anything like this before, but definitely there were some mistakes. I've talked before about the whole fridge larder situation. I wish we'd got a double fridge and a single larder which is definitely something we're looking to change and I think when we do that we'll probably repaint the kitchen. I love the colour of the kitchen, it's the same colour as our lounge but it works so much better in our lounge because it's a dark north facing room, our kitchen's a lot brighter so it shows up a lot more blue and I think if I was doing it again I would just do it like a darker almost black very very dark blue colour but that's the benefit of having a wooden kitchen you can repaint it and it's really easy to do so we made a really good decision by getting a wooden kitchen. The kind of back doors that we got aren't the best quality we probably could have done more research although at the time there weren't many options. I've talked before about the carpet things like spotlights I wish I'd put a centre light in Grey's room but there's no way of knowing that until you like live here with spotlights like or even have a baby and you know about like bedtime and the certain lighting that you want in the room like I've talked before about the bath the plug for the bath is in the center and every night Gray sits on it and the water drains it's so annoying like there's no way I would have known that you're gonna make mistakes and you just learn from them if you ever get to do a property again if we're lucky enough to do a renovation again we'll learn from those mistakes and nothing's the end of the world. The answer is, I think we did really well. There were a few little regrets here and there that I would do differently, but nothing major. And we absolutely love our home. I just realized that the first question was asking if we we're planning to change anything around the house this year. And I didn't actually answer that. I just talked about the garden. We are hoping to do a loft extension this year. Everything's gonna kind of move around a bit. We'll, we'll have a large room and an ensuite bathroom upstairs. We don't feel like we wanna move our bedroom upstairs whilst we have young children, both for like a safety thing, but also just we don't wanna be coming up and down the stairs, putting dummies in all throughout the night. So whilst we've got young children, we're gonna keep our bedroom where it is. And we love our bedroom, we've recently done it up, so we're really happy to stay there. So for now, the upstairs, the loft, will become an office slash spare room. It'll be so exciting to have a spare room with a sofa bed for when hopefully we can like go into each other other's houses again and maybe Rich's parents can stay around. Grey will move into this room which is my office and then Grey's room will be a baby's room hopefully for when we have like future children. And then in like five years time when our kids are a little bit older and we feel comfortable doing so we'll move our bedroom upstairs. One of our children, I love I'm talking like we have multiple children, like please let us be able to, god you just never know do you? One of our kids will go into our room and then the little room that's now Grey's room will become a little home office. That's the plan. And that's why I feel like the rooms are always like in limbo because they're always gonna be something else at some point. So I did never wanna do anything like too permanent to them, but I'm excited for this to become Grey's room. I'm gonna like hopefully do it up really nicely for her. We just have to do some little wardrobes and it'll be nice for her to have like a bigger space to play in. Melissa asked, who is your favorite character or pairing in This Is Us? Oh my God, guys, I love This Is Us. Although it keeps like stopping. They don't do weekly episodes. I'm very confused on the schedule. I love Randall. And Beth. Randall's so sweet. He's, he's a complicated guy. And 
I think some people probably don't like him, but I love him. He's very sweet. Beth is just, I love Beth. She is so cool and she's such a good wife and a good mum. I think they're probably the best couple, although obviously Jack and Rebecca, like back in the day, was so cool. They're a little bit like two in love for me. It's a bit like it's a bit much, but he, Jack is just, oh, love him. And I love the throwback scenes, like from the like 70s. I think those are my favorite couples, like present day Randall and Beth, and then like back in the day, Jack and Rebecca. Also, what are they gonna do? Mandy Moore's pregnant now. How, how are they gonna do that? <laughs> Maybe that's why it stopped. Becca asked, how do you find time or what to prioritize and when with work, motherhood, marriage, friends, any tips that work for you? Well, these days it's, easier to juggle friends because you never see anyone. But voice noting and WhatsApp is very important. It's a tricky one, but I remember hearing a quote once from someone saying, imagine all of your things in life are balls. Imagine if I just left it there. <laughs> no, that's not the quote. Imagine everything is a ball. <laughs> Work is a ball. Family is a ball friends is a ball and you're juggling all of these balls all the time. I think what's important to remember is that not all of the balls, I feel like I've gone mad, not all of the balls are made from the same thing. Some balls are plastic and if you drop them they'll bounce and some balls are glass and if you drop them they'll shatter. And that is what I often try and remind myself of. And it's what I had to remind a friend of recently when she was struggling with like balancing everything. For example, Grey and Rich are made out of glass. I, I don't want to drop the ball on my family, which is so important to me. That's how I remind myself. Although saying that out loud now, it's like you can't purely prioritize like your income, if you're like the main earner especially, is so important. So it's it's tricky to balance it. But when I feel overwhelmed, I will just like try and think of that and take a moment and try not to be on my phone when I'm with Grey and just shift things around a bit. So there's always gonna be that like mum guilt. I'm always gonna feel like I'm missing out on work things. I just try and remember the juggling thing. Got there in the end. Sorry, no more talking about balls. Okay, the final question from Arctic Magdi. What are your plans for the next five years, business and personal wise? Personal, I'd love to have another baby, um, hopefully. And I don't know what else personal, like the house plans and stuff. I'd like to see some family and friends at some point. Business wise, it's so hard because I've got so much in me that I want to do. I really want to like start my own business like separate to this. But I also feel a bit like is now really the time to do that? Like with babies and young kids, I. I really want to enjoy the first two to three years of my kids' lives. Once they're in school, they're in school for 18 years and then like, that's it. So I feel like the first few years are so precious. So part of me feels like I'm just gonna enjoy what I'm doing now while I'm having babies. And then once my kids are in school, that's like a, an opportunity for like a second wind of like starting something new and thinking of something more long-term. So I don't know yet. I don't know whether I'll start something in the next five years or whether I'll just like keep Keep doing what I'm doing and enjoy it and then once my kids are in school like I look at people like Caroline Hirons and Erica Davies I always think of those two because they've got older kids and they are just like killing it and loving life and are just such like powerful great business women I feel like there's such a pressure at our age to like start new things start a brand start a business but actually the average age of a founder of a startup is 45 I'm pretty sure so sometimes I just feel like I need to take a pause and you know what I've got a long life ahead of me maybe now's my time to just like enjoy having kids enjoy my job and I'll think of that big thing in my 40s. That was my brain dump. That's my thinking sometimes. So those were the 10 questions that I picked from YouTube that you guys asked. Thank you so much for asking them. And I'll chat to you guys soon in my next video. Bye.